Well, thank you for that overly generous introduction, Cyrus. Uh, I'm not sure who got a better one, Matt Brown or me, so uh, thank you very much. Uh, I am indeed here to talk to you guys for a few minutes today about Facebook search. And before I do, uh, I do want to lead with a brief disclaimer, which is uh, I am by no means a Facebook marketing expert. You know, that's the domain of uh, friends of mine like Marty Weintraub and Will Scott and Matt Siltala. Um, but as Cyrus said, I have been spending a lot of time uh, experimenting and researching a little bit uh, into Facebook's search product and uh, had my interest peaked by a number of stories that have come out about Facebook search this spring. Uh, and so I wanted to share some things with you and hopefully by the end of this uh, 30 minutes, I've convinced you that it's something that you too should probably think about paying uh, more attention to. So that's really the goal. Brief outline of what I plan to cover here today. A little bit of context, uh, again, about why you should care. Uh, some of the history involved with Facebook search, which I think is incredibly important uh, to look at uh, for where they might be going. Um, then I'll dive into some tactical ways to construct queries, uh, especially structured search queries using the graph uh, piece of Facebook search, uh, and use cases for those queries before getting into uh, tactical implications for the future. So, with that, uh, a little bit about why I think you should care and why you should be paying attention to Facebook search. So, I'm sure all of you have seen uh, some variation of this graphic, uh, basically Facebook's user growth in the last seven years. Um, the, the main point to me is that, you know, despite what we hear about, oh, Instagram and WhatsApp and, or, and Snapchat and all of these things bleeding Facebook users, they're still growing at a pretty good clip. The, the percentage growth rate has obviously slowed down, um, but it's a linear, a linear growth pattern. They have almost 1.5 billion users uh, on Facebook today. So it's a huge number of people. And more importantly, uh, something that many of you probably didn't know, I certainly didn't know it before I put this presentation together, uh, as early as September of 2012, uh, Facebook was already getting a billion search queries a day, uh, which is kind of a crazy number. Uh, and in fact, I wanted to see how crazy a number it was. So I went back and I looked at the Comscore data uh, from this time period, September of 2012. And I know, you know, Marshall's presentation yesterday was spot on. You know, this is not perfectly precise uh, numbers probably, but I think it's directionally accurate. And if you look at this time period, September of 2012, you see Google's at about 110 uh, billion searches a month. And Facebook's 30 billion searches a month already in September of 2012 would have made it a very strong number two search engine at the time. And I think that a lot of us just don't realize how much search activity was already happening in, in, on Facebook three years ago and has continued to increase uh, in, in the last few years. And I think this becomes even more important when you look at slides like this and the one that Rand showed from uh, the RKG studies in his initial presentation. The overall growth rate of, of referrals from Google search and especially from Google organic search, uh, thinking about you know, Dr. Pete's presentation, um, the number of those referrals uh, is continuing to level off at the very least. And so we as marketers, if we want to continue to try to grow our audience through search, uh, I think we need to you know, start thinking about different opportunities. And uh, Jeremy Stoppelman, uh, Yelp CEO, actually echoed this sentiment uh, a few months ago in, in one of their earnings calls, uh, basically saying that the age of, of users going to Google and typing a query and clicking a link and visiting a website and hopefully converting on that website, you know, the, the traditional funnel that I think a lot of us have, have kind of built our businesses on and, and are generally evaluated on, um, that era has kind of peaked. We've kind of maxed out on that. And so if we want to continue to, to grow our audience uh, through search, I think Facebook represents a, a really good opportunity to do that. Um, the picture becomes you know, even clearer when you look at what's happening on mobile. So this is a slide from uh, Flurry Analytics. Uh, you know, time spent on mobile phones. Uh, we probably, hopefully you guys already know this, but 86% of the time is spent in app uh, and only 14% in mobile browsers. Obviously, it's a huge threat to Google, uh, and one of the reasons that they're uh, pursuing all of these alternative uh, strategies in mobile. And in particular, if you look at the specific apps that we're spending time on, Facebook dominates. 17% of all time uh, on mobile devices is spent in the Facebook app, uh, compared to 12% in both browsers, basically Chrome and Safari. Um, that's browser time. That's not search time. That's browser time. So Facebook basically has become the home page, the home app, uh, for pretty much everyone on mobile phones. And so as we look at, again, the growth rate in, in uh, 
search volume uh, declining at Google, the, the share of organic search as a, as a function of web, web visits uh, declining from Google. I think Facebook is generally very well positioned to help us make up some of that gap. And for those of us who are paying attention in the early days of Facebook search, I think it represents uh, a great opportunity. And yet, uh, I don't know how many people are really aware of the amazing search infrastructure that Facebook already has. Uh, so my favorite industry news site, Search Engine Land, uh, you can see here, comparing the number of, queer, of, of articles they've written on Facebook search versus Google search, um, you know, it's a dramatic difference. Google is, we, we all sort of have these Google blinders on, uh, even especially at Moz, uh, the same, same search for articles published on the Moz blog. And even when we publish articles on Facebook search on the Moz blog, uh, you know, two of the top three results are about Facebook influencing Google results. Um, the, incidentally, this top, the, the top result here, the Marketer's Guide to Facebook Graph Search, an excellent uh, guest post um, that I'll refer to at the end of the, end of the deck. But at any rate, I think we all sort of have these, these, these blinders on when it comes to search that it's so Google focused. Um, and I think that Facebook is, is really poised to, uh, to present a great opportunity to those of us who are, who are paying attention. So let me walk you through a little bit about where Facebook search has been, where it's come from, and where I think it might be going. Um, as I said, Mark Zuckerberg was quoted three years ago as saying they're already getting a billion daily queries. This was even before uh, they actually had a formal search product, right? So Graph Search launched in January of 2013. And Graph Search was and still is, uh, I think, most useful and kind of pr primarily focused on uh, returning people results. So this is, a, this is from their kind of initial press release. People who like cycling and live in Seattle, Washington. These kinds of queries uh, are really what Graph Search was, was designed for. And uh, Mark Zuckerberg kind of backed that up in some of the initial, one of the initial articles that was written about Graph Search on Wired, saying you know, one of his primary use cases was really around recruiting, um, which is obviously very people focused. But you know, we do see that he has his eye on you know, Google search more broadly, where, whether you're looking for a top restaurant or a museum or what's to say the favorite tunes of art majors in Montreal. So much more general queries uh, that Facebook search will eventually apply to. So Graph Search was rolled out to all English users uh, soon after that. Not much really happened in the, uh, from a product standpoint in the interceding kind of year and a half. And then in December of last year, I think you know, something pretty important happened. Graph Search became just search. And really what that entailed was posts uh, as a result type. So instead of people as a result type uh, kind of being prioritized, I think posts now got a, a much bigger boost uh, in terms of the, the types of results that Facebook was showing uh, for searches. And simultaneously to that, or roughly simultaneously, uh, Facebook dropped Bing from backfilling uh, its web search results uh, within their app. And so I think that these two things combined uh, were a pretty important development. Uh, in March of this year, they acquired a company called The Find, which I've never heard of, um, but I think directionally it's kind of important. Uh, the Find is a product search uh, startup, and I think if you look at the markets that, face, that anybody really can monetize in search, product search is a big one. Uh, so this strikes me as a, a real, the start of a real move into an actual search engine. Uh, that they can monetize, as I said. And then just recently, these two, I think, are really interesting, came out in May, uh, just two months ago. The ad link feature, um, which only some users have uh, on iOS, this is essentially the ability uh, to look for, a, look for stories related to keywords that you want to share uh, with your audience without ever having to, to, to leave the Facebook app, right? So you don't have to go to Google and search for a story, or you don't have to be in, in Firefox or whatever. Uh, and pull a, pull a story link. You can do it right from within the Facebook app. Uh, and to this end, uh, Facebook says it has indexed over a trillion posts uh, that reference web content that this, that this feature is built on. So they already have a pretty amazing uh, sort of library of, of content that people can share uh, and that can be searched from directly within the Facebook app. And just two days later, uh, they formally announced this partnership with a select group of publishers. Uh, that you can now browse content from certain publishers, uh, again, directly in the Facebook app. And so this, I think, speaks to a more complete Facebook search ecosystem where more and more and more of our behavior, uh, search and social related, is all happening uh, within Facebook. And as far as you know, where they're going, I don't, I don't pretend to know the entire future, um, but I do know that this is really kind of just the beginning. We're sort of in the beginning to middle phase of 
the evolution of the product. And how I know that is that Mark Zuckerberg has come out and said uh, that graph search is really a five-year thing. And so we're really in year two and a half to three of Facebook's kind of really investment in search. And so I, I think the next two years, we're going to see a tremendous amount of innovation and new features and new opportunities uh, provided by Facebook to us as marketers. And so although right now, and, and a lot of this presentation is going to focus on uh, the potential and the opportunities presented by this kind of people-focused graph search, I think in the future, Facebook search is going to be, is, represents a tremendous opportunity in terms of audience building. Again, to help us make up the loss of traditional organic referral traffic that I think is kind of inevitable uh, from Google. Okay, uh, a few slides about um, how to construct some of these graph search uh, type queries. So for all of you grammarians out there, uh, my mom is a gr grammarian, so I had to include this slide. Uh, so some parts of Facebook speech, you have subjects and objects, uh, modifiers, verbs, and set relationships. And that's really complicated. I'll explain to you in an example kind of how this works. But Facebook uh, graph search only interprets very uh, specifically structured types of queries. And so I'll show you kind of how that works. Um, here you can see a lonely uh, single entry of Matthew Brown as the only Moz employee, current Moz employee, who likes the Portland Timbers. Um, you know, Matt doesn't have a lot of friends generally, but it actually makes sense uh, in the context of this uh, result because Moz, of course, is based in Seattle. Uh, the Sounders are the Timbers' number one rival, and so not very many Mozers probably like uh, like the Timbers. But anyway, so here's how this query is constructed. Uh, you have the subject, you're looking for employees who like, the object, the Portland Timbers, and then the modifiers of current Moz employees. And so, again, just an example, only certain types of structured queries uh, will work in terms of returning these, these people-focused results. Here is a non-exhaustive uh, list of parameters that you may find useful as you do uh, your own experiments, and I'll just leave it here for you to refer to in the, in the slide decks that you can download. But, you know, a few ideas of things are, you know, visitors to a particular venue, uh, employees we already saw, uh, professions, uh, apps used, um, pa pages liked. These are the kinds of, of uh, subjects and objects that I think provide a lot of interest uh, or, or op offer a lot of opportunity for marketers. And professions in particular, uh, are one of my favorite areas um, <coughs> that I've discovered, which makes sense given that Zuckerberg's, one of his primary uh, use cases for graph search early on was recruiting. Uh, and if you want to know what professions are kind of possible to do perform these queries around, um, just go in and perform a fake edit to your own uh, Facebook personal profile and see the kinds of, of professions that are returned there uh, in the dropdowns. These look pretty similar to me to uh, how Freebase taxonomizes uh, their, their professional sort of categories, um, and some of the content that you see on, on uh, pages about these professions that Facebook has generated is pulled from Wikipedia. So those might also give you some alternative ideas for uh, professions to try. Uh, next slide, there we go. Uh, interests are also uh, you know, something that you can search around. Basically, professions and interests are, are sort of two, no, two node types within the Facebook graph. Uh, here's an example of a page, again, that Facebook has created with Wikipedia content. Uh, around this interest that's accessible on a particular graph ID, uh, URL, small business. There's a million of these things. Um, you can, again, look at Freebase, look at Wikipedia. You could also potentially uh, pretend to run a Facebook ad campaign and see the interests against which you can advertise. Um, these are all really useful parameters around which to perform these structured searches. Uh, and sometimes people. People can also be nodes uh, in the graph, particularly if they're well-known figures or uh, have some sort of authority within the, the overall Facebook graph. Uh, and just one example of a uh, very specific query that only returns four results worldwide. Uh, political junkies will understand why that is. But let me explain uh, this, how this works. Basically, if you're looking at it from a URL perspective, every URL for a Facebook search result starts with HTTPS, facebook.com slash search. Uh, you then get the graph ID of Senator Jim Imhoff's page uh, and then the likers of that page. Uh, append, that, uh, append to that the ID of the interest page about environment uh, and then likers of that interest. Uh, and then you look at the intersection uh, of those groups. So for those of you who don't know, the reason that there's only four very confused souls who show up for uh, this, this result, Senator Jim Inhofe is the head of the Senate Committee on the Environment uh, who happens to believe that global warming is a hoax. So if you are one of these four people, I'm sorry, uh, I'm not entirely sure uh, how you reconcile those, those two differences. So, 
Uh, so just, but that's, I just put that up there as an illustration of the, the amazing specificity uh, that you can sometimes find with, with these Facebook search queries. And who knows, if your target market is a very small subset of people, those kinds of queries might be, might be really helpful in identifying uh, your audience. OK. Uh, you can also construct uh, undefined queries, a little less formal, uh, less structured, or, or less structure in the results. Uh, using the STR uh, parameter, URL parameter. There's a great, couple of great uh, tutorials that I've linked to here in the, in the slide deck that show you how to use this. Essentially, you're looking for keywords on a particular page type uh, that, as opposed to uh, and sort of nodes in the graph. Uh, and just an example of where this might be useful is here I'm looking at professional profiles that people have created uh, where they might mention blogging. And you can see here, these are all three very well-known bloggers that showed up uh, for this, this type of search. And I'm looking for the intersection of people who mention blogging on their uh, employment profiles. Even less structure, uh, you can try a URL that looks something like this uh, with uh, what pages in Portland talk about float tanks. Facebook, as you can see, doesn't really know how to interpret that in terms of returning structured results uh, for that query. So they think that means cities of people named float tank that are in Portland, Oregon. Uh, so these kinds of things, again, don't always work. Uh, sometimes you don't get these structured results. But uh, if you just do this search more broadly as a keyword, you can see the URL uh, sort of down at the bottom of that screenshot. Uh, here you can see the primary role that I think post results uh, are going to continue to to play in, in the Facebook uh, interface. And you can see that the top result here within posts is something that was shared by a friend of mine within my social graph, uh, a piece of content about, it happens to be about a float tank conference that's happening in Portland, um, but a piece of content that is relevant to those keywords from out there across the web. And so this is where I think the intersection of that, that ad link capability and the ability to browse content directly within Facebook this is where that, I think, is really going to come together uh, in a big way in the future. But for now, let's talk about a few use cases uh, around which these structured uh, Facebook graph queries uh, might, be, might be valuable to you as marketers today. So one of them is around content marketing. Uh, we heard Matt and Christina uh, in their earlier presentations uh, you know, talk about the importance of targeting your content to a specific persona. And here's a, here's a query that can kind of help you uh, figure out what kind of content might be a good target. Uh, as well as Will Reynolds talking about, you know, what do people aspire to, not just what are they searching for. Here you can see what are the interests of people that like my page. This is Perch Furniture, a, a friend of mine who runs a small furniture store in Portland. Um, interior design you might expect is a pretty good overlap for a furniture store, but things like gardening, knitting, sewing. Uh, you know, if there's a creative way that you can get content out there in front of your audience, you know they're already interested in these topics probably going to have a better chance of spreading virally among you, the, the key audience you're interested in um, than just writing about furniture all day long. Uh, another thing, for, especially if you work with small businesses who have a hard time creating content on their own, uh, you know, thinking about using photos as content, specifically photos taken at your place of business. Um, you know, reach out to these folks who took a, a great photo at your business. Uh, maybe ask them, first of all, ask them permission to reuse their photo in your newsletter, but maybe ask them for you know, a quick interview about what it was like uh, when they were you know, under the needle or whatever they were uh, for, your, for your orthodontic practice. So, so I think thinking about content that your users have already created uh, is a good use case as well. Uh, audience intelligence. So uh, here's one, pages liked by people who like Moz Local. Um, and of course, search engine land shows up at the top of the list, not surprising. Um, but maybe you didn't know this if you, you know, sort of didn't perform a, haven't, haven't performed this query before. You might discover additional uh, pages that, you're, that are surprising that your fans are already liking. And so um, I, I think it's a great opportunity for you to reach out and you know, potentially get a guest article on some of these places. Uh, for those of you who are lazy, like me, you can target these sites uh, explicitly. Uh, in the Google Display Network, um, and that is a good way to not only capture uh, people that are evangelists for your brand, but also other sort of look-alike folks uh, that might be interested in, in what, you, what you have to offer. You can even add a local lens to this. Of course, I always have local on the brain. Um, so here's an example of, of pages liked by uh, Portland, Oregon residents who like Perch Furniture, and I see a calendar here, so I might you know, promote an event that I have on this calendar or uh, even put a banner out at the top uh, for, for fans of, of, of this, um, fans of this uh, website who also like uh, my, my business. Uh, influencer research. This is where I think is maybe the most powerful area uh, the graph search has to offer. So uh, if you're thinking about uh, who do I talk to about you know, helping me get the word out about my content, 
this professional search. Journalists who live in your town, Portland, Oregon, if you want to take it one step further and know where you have a sort of soft intro already. Friends of my friends who are journalists and live in Portland, Oregon, uh, kind of a great search. Um, and then journalists who live in, a, in your town and work at a particular outlet. I mean, this kind of thing is amazing uh, in terms of figuring out who to reach out to, who to build a relationship with uh, when you want your content to, to be spread uh, in your community. Uh, if, you, if you aren't locally focused, you can do a similar thing, which uh, using that STR parameter for the less structured results. Uh, who's writing? Who's a blogger or journalist or whatever? Uh, who's also interested in your topic? So this, this URL is people interested in golf and blogging on their um, professional uh, profiles. You can go one step further and look at golf as an interest. Uh, golfers who are journalists and live in Portland, Oregon. Uh, journalists who like Small Business Saturday, which is a page, not an interest, uh, and live in Portland, Oregon. There's a lot of possibilities uh, for these kinds of phrases. Uh, this is another one that I think is, you know, has a lot of potential, uh, probably more for big brands than small ones, but um, you can look at the profession of presidents or vice presidents or owners or whatever you know, sort of decision maker uh, job title that you want. Uh, who like your page and live in a given market. So if you're doing a product launch or you're hosting an event, these are people that you want to reach out to as VIPs, uh, asking them to spread the word about your event or product to their networks, et cetera, et cetera. I think this could be a really valuable thing uh, for a lot of brands out there. And then this one is a tip that I actually brought up at our Local Up conference back in February that a lot of people like. So I thought I'd share it with a broader audience. Um, people who use Yelp, who use the Yelp app, and like Perch Furniture. So Yelp obviously frowns upon asking people specifically to leave you a review uh, on Yelp, but you can do this in a white hat way. So th these are people you know are active Yelp users who've already expressed that they like your business. Um, you can reach out and ask them to actually check in the next time uh, that they come into your shop, tell them you have some kind of special for people who check in, et cetera, et cetera. Make sure they feel like a VIP. Yelp is totally fine with you asking uh, people to check in. They actually came out and said that publicly about two months ago or three months ago. And Yelp will then actually prompt people who check in to a given business to leave a review uh, through the Yelp app. So it's a, way, it's a totally white hat way um, that you can kind of segment your audience and identify who is a you know, good possible reviewer um, and get reviews that are really hard to get. Uh, some final use cases around business development. Uh, so if you uh, sell a product and you're trying to get it distributed in a new market, um, one potential uh, graph search you might do, bars in Seattle, Washington, liked by people who like Breakside Brewery. So if you, if you run the you know, distribution uh, operation at Breakside and you're trying to get into Seattle, why not get your product uh, out in stores um, that you, or bars in this case, where you know you already have a built-in fan base. And I think that that can really help you seed, uh, potentially seed your presence in, in additional markets beyond your kind of uh, home base. Uh, and if you're more on the B2B side, you know, this is a potential, uh, potentially valuable search. People who like your business and work at another business. If you're looking for an internal cheerleader to help you, you know, with a proposal or, or getting executive buy-in. Uh, and then a couple of locally focused examples here, uh, just to kind of close out. Uh, you, can, you can get really cr uh, creative with uh, targeted offers. So this is one based on relationship status. Uh, singles who like one of my favorite coffee shops, Cova Coffee Roasters, and live in Portland, Oregon. You know, potentially you can reach out to them and say, hey, you know, here's a $5 coupon or here's a free coffee the next time you come in on a date. You know, hope it works great for you. Um, something like that. Or if you're a day spa, uh, you know, engage people who like your spa. Um, you, know, you can reach out to them and say, hey, we you know, noticed you just got engaged, congratulations. We'd like to offer your bridal party a 20% you know, discount on our bridal party spa package, something like that. Um, and this is all stuff that you can do organically that Facebook helps you identify uh, who these people are. And if you want to take it to the next level, uh, there is a bonus couple of slides here. Number one, uh, you can plug in Facebook profiles. Hopefully many of you know about this uh, tactic already. You can plug in individual Facebook profiles uh, into the full contact API. And full contact will then tell you uh, all of the other social networks that they know about that this person is on, uh, which is really neat. So if LinkedIn is a more appropriate venue for you to actually reach out to this person, or if Twitter is a more appropriate venue to actually reach out to this person, uh, the full contact API can, can um, you know, inform you of, of those opportunities. And again, for those of you who are lazy like me uh, and don't want to learn about all of those grammar rules and are frustrated by the fact that Facebook doesn't always return structured results for really creative searches that you thought they should, 
Intelligent Software has built this amazing little widget. I don't know these guys. Uh, just happened to come across it as I was doing research for this presentation, where you can punch in all of the kind of various parameters that you're interested in, and they will construct the most appropriate URL um, to return results for you. So if you don't want to spend a lot of time uh, learning how this works and just want to do it, uh, this is a great, great resource for you. OK, looks like I've got about five minutes left, more or less on time. Uh, let's look into the Palantir. I had to throw in a Christopher Lee reference. I'm glad Dr. Pete did. Um, what an amazing actor, RIP. Um, so what are, the, what are the implications, the tactical implications for maintaining a strong Facebook uh, presence in, or phrase, Facebook search presence as they grow that product? Number one, uh, I would encourage you guys to move beyond the page like. Uh, hopefully, most of you who are bigger brands are already doing this. Um, but it kills me when I walk into a small business uh, still to this day and see these big signs on the front counter that say, like us on Facebook. You know, it doesn't really do you that much good these days. Uh, fewer or less than 2% of any of your uh, page posts are actually going to be seen by your, your fans. Um, meanwhile, shared posts, uh, first of all, get a lot of um, get a lot of visibility in people's news feeds among their friends and their friend circles. Uh, so I think you're going to get A, that shared post much more visible on the initial share, and B, the shared posts have this permanent life uh, in the kind of ad link uh, ecosystem that Facebook is building. So if I do this search, best beer in Portland today uh, in Facebook, the number one result that pops up for me is this post by Ben Lloyd that he shared. Uh, about an article, it wasn't even about the business itself, but an article that mentioned, it wasn't from the business itself, an article that mentioned a friend of his business, uh, Produce Row. And so now Produce Row is at the top of my search results uh, for Best Beer in Portland. So encourage your fans, encourage your audience to share your stuff much more than like. That's what's going to give it, I think, this kind of permanent uh, or, or longevity uh, in Facebook search results. These are basically plus ones that will actually mean something. And for those of you who are really old school SEOs, you might remember a, a, a website, a product called Cool. Uh, this is, I think Facebook is kind of building what Cool's idea was. Cool was a little bit ahead of its time, but essentially Facebook is, has this amazing index of curated links that your own social network uh, has shared uh, with you and with, with uh, their circles. This is completely independent of any kind of uh, link data other than that initial share, right? And so. For us as marketers, I think we should be really excited about this. We don't have to worry about, you know, oh, should we ask for this anchor text or, you know, do we pay for this link? How much is that worth? You know, is that going to get us in trouble with Google? Who freaking cares, right? Get people to, first of all, write great content, get people to share that content, uh, and that's what's going to give you long term search presence uh, in Facebook. And, uh, you know, Marshall uh, pointed out yesterday in his presentation sometimes that content itself is paid, right? That Cathay Pacific article on the New York Times. Um, that was New York Times' most popular post. There's a lot of opportunities here, I think, uh, you know, in, a, in an algorithm that is not dependent on link relationships. Number two, uh, so in addition to making sure that your app is incredibly indexable, uh, using the protocols I think Marshall and Cindy mentioned uh, yesterday, I would encourage you to try to drive as many app authentications of your Facebook, of fa people's Facebook accounts as possible. Um, from the initial uh, wired coverage of the graph search launch, you can see another big agenda item is assimilating the massive amounts of data generated by third party applications. Uh, it's very clear that this is becoming a thing, not only for Facebook, but Google now on tap uh, is very much after the same kind of activity, the same kind of data. Uh, and so I think that the extent, again, that your app can be indexable and that Facebook can see the activity of its users in your app uh, will probably help you in the long term as we see the mobile ecosystem evolving. Okay, 90 seconds left for, again, my favorite topic, local search. Uh, Facebook did basically ignore local search in its last update uh, in December. Greg Sterling was not the only one to lament this. Well, basically, all of us in the local search community, we've kind of been waiting for Facebook to make a real play uh, in local. But the reality is they already have a pretty good set of results. Uh, and this is maybe why it's so frustrating for us. If you do a search, even a very long tail search, bankruptcy lawyers in my hometown, Decatur, Illinois, you get a pretty decent looking uh, search result page, the one there on the left. Um, and golf courses in Portland, you know, bigger metro area, uh, sort of less long tail query, you get a great list of search results. Those really are, you know, kind of the top public courses in Portland. Um, and what's very clear about this uh, is that check-ins and reviews are in large measure driving a big part of this algorithm uh, in terms of what's showing up. And so I think regardless of when or exactly how Facebook releases a local search app, 
or embeds more local search results in you know, standard, standard search results. I think driving check-ins and reviews now is a great idea. Uh, in fact, 50%, this is a 2012 slide here on the left, 50% uh, of people way back in 2012 were already actively looking for local businesses on social networks. I think this behavior is happening more and more and more than we, than we realize. Uh, and in fact, Mike Blumenthal did a study last year that Facebook was the number two preferred destination for people to leave reviews of local businesses. So people are already doing a lot of this behavior. Um, make sure they know about it. Give them a call to action to do it on behalf of your business. And in fact, it can even help you get more attractive search results in Google now that uh, Facebook reviews show up as uh, rich snippets in Google search results. Facebook is getting much more serious about local. I think it's pretty clear there's been a couple of, of additional uh, innovations that have happened. They basically replicated Google's click to call. They're giving out free beacons to any SMB in the world who wants them. Uh, I think we're going to see major movement from Facebook and local uh, in the next nine months to a year. So just to kind of sum up, uh, promote sharing, not liking, not only for immediate newsfeed visibility, but also for kind of permanent archive, archival uh, search visibility. Uh, connect your apps, uh, make sure they're indexable, and promote, if you're a local business, promote reviews and check-ins uh, to stay ahead of the curve. So uh, I'm just going to leave this uh, up. I'm basically out of time and out of slides, but this is a great post by Simon Penson that I mentioned earlier. Might give you even more ideas on how to use graph search to uh, build your business. So hopefully I've convinced you, uh, start paying more attention to Facebook search. I think it's going to be really big, and thanks very much for listening. Okay, so a year from now, we're going to be saying, David Mim told us about Or you're Facebook. going to be saying, man, that was a waste of 35 minutes. But hey, <laughs> we can, we, we'll see. I'll be back next year. Okay, we're a little over time, so just a couple of questions here. Uh, one on, on Twitter, James Loonstein, thank you for the tweet. Uh, if, I do Facebook, if I do Facebook graph search, are the results personalized to me or unfiltered, yes. not signed in? Yes, they are, they are, you have to be signed in as a, as a person in order to do these, these uh, queries. Gotcha. Um, so all of those are going to be personalized. However, uh, basically, you can, there's a pretty clear demarcation in terms of people that you know and then sort of generic results below that. So yes, the results are personalized, but it can still be useful to find people outside your network. OK. Um, a couple of people that were asking, Susan Smolga, one of them, can you segment the audience from these search queries into custom audience for ads? Whew, uh, I didn't see that you could do that, um, but you would have to think Facebook would want you to. So either they're going to build this functionality into their ad platform or uh, make that a sort of drag and drop uh, similar to AdWords. Yeah. That might be a question we follow up with Marty. On yeah, that exactly. Part. Right. That's a, that is a great question for Marty. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And finally, I had a question. So you, you talked about finding influencers, uh, finding people to leave reviews on Yelp. I thought that was brilliant. What is the next step for actually reaching out to those people? Do you message them within right. the Facebook app, or what's the? Sure. Well, that's why. I, I mean, you kind of have to. It sort of depends on the business. I think uh, personally, you know, I'd love to get a Facebook message from you know my favorite coffee shop, or if the, the owner of Breakside reached out and said, "Hey, you want a free pint next time you come in?" Um, I think it depends on the business. You may be not that cool if you're an insurance, you know, in the insurance world or something like that. So um, I would just, you know, be discreet and, uh, you know, act, act like you would in the real world. Um, that's kind of my best advice for, for anybody. So that's awesome. Yeah. David, thank cool. you so much for Thanks, stopping Cyrus. by again. All right. Oh, wait, I, you get it. Hug. All right. Oh.